Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've been wanting to take a look at for a minute. When I first heard about it, I reached out to Yunzi. Um, they were kind enough to send this out to me for review in exchange for my review. Um, I have uh, been working with them starting this past year and they've been very affable, very attentive. Um, and. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think keyboard companies are starting to really up their customer service game. They realize how important after sales support is. And I think uh, this company is one of them. I've heard a lot of good stories uh, from customers that have had nothing but a good experience with them. So I am glad to be able to take a look at the products. Now, today we're taking a look at their A66. Um, 65% has, oh, this is the AL66. The Yunzi AL66 in blue with a milk switch. Hmm. I don't, unless they ask, you know, what color, what switch I want, I usually leave it up to the vendors to send me, you know, what they think is best. I usually like, you know, let them pick, you know, why, why don't you pick what you think the best combination is? So I usually don't ask or, you know, unless they ask me, you know, what color would you like? What switch would you like? So they have gone ahead and picked out blue, which is my favorite color so um this this past year really this past year really has been the year of uh, 65 percent um i mean right now the gmk 67 is i would say the budget king i mean the year before last it was definitely the tester 68 because on the sub budget keeps if you guys don't know about it it's on reddit it's a subreddit or a community um we just hit 30,000 subscribers. Um, we haven't even been a sub for two years, so it's growing at a quick pace. We try to create a community where everybody can come and share, and it's not just, you know, about... Budget means that no one's budget is, is disqualifying. So if you only have $50 or you want to spend $500, as long as that's within your budget, then come and share. Um, there's other communities that are almost want like a price tag. You know, your keyboard needs to be at least this much or has to be a custom keyboard in order for you to share it. But on budget keeps, we don't have that. We just ask that people share the specs so that other people that see it and they might like it know how they can reproduce it. So today we're taking a look at this AL66, a 65% from Yunzi. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in the box. All right, before we dig into the keyboard, let's see what accessories, what extras they include. Um, always gotta love extra keycaps because it gives the end user the ability to say, hey, I like this color, I like this color, I prefer that be that color. When extra keycaps are included, it allows the end user to you know, customize their keyboard. It, you know, it may not be a whole new paint, you know, job, but it's at least something that they can say, hey, I, I chose those keys that way because I like these colors or I like that combination. So always nice to see some extra keycaps as well as extra switches. Now here we have, oh, looks like two user cards or quick user guides that have the, um, the connections. This is a uh, three mode. I believe, yeah, because it has a 2.4 and Bluetooth. Yep, three-mode keyboard. And it has the uh, basic shortcuts for connecting and for use. Now, I usually do my best to keep these. All right, they do come in separate languages, separate language cards. Uh, I like that as well. But I usually like to keep, keep this around um, for the first day or two that I'm using the keyboard so I can... Um, kind of get used to it. Some keyboards, they retain very similar mappings for light controls and everything, um, but some don't. So it's usually a good idea to keep this nearby. Um, I pretty much always, after reviewing the keyboard, doing the unboxing and everything, I usually will use that keyboard as my daily, uh, sometimes just for a couple of days, sometimes for a little longer, uh, so that I can, when I come back to monitor anything, I have more feedback that I can provide. All right, so what do we have in the box? A decent thickness. 
looks to be about six foot. And here are the switches that Oh, okay, these are, if I'm not mistaken, oh no, these are Yunzi. These are actually branded Yunzi, and there is no ping to them whatsoever. They do feel a little bit lighter than most switches, but I don't think that's going to affect much of anything. I do want to take a look if they're to see if they're lubricated or if they just naturally come without any ping. No lubrication on the spring. Huh. Oh, I do see some lubrication there on the stem. Okay, so it does look that these are probably factory pre-lubed, but I'm surprised that there's no spring ping as I don't feel anything on the spring, but I don't hear it, so as long as I don't hear it, I'm happy. And of course, you know, it's, like I said, they included some extra switches. Thank you, Yunzi. Thank you for thinking of the customer. And we also have a key cap, a key switch cooler, unbranded. A lot of manufacturers are doing this, and I really appreciate it as well. They are including dust covers. If you keep your keyboard at the office especially you know overnight over the weekend um, I would highly suggest keeping this on there when you're not using it so we have a 65% with a knob and we have a really nice I like these um, these more metallic compact knobs this is not a D knob it's a standard just round knob I'm going to I'm going to guess that it's around the same 6 millimeter diameter that most of these are. Yep, 6 millimeter diameter. The key caps, it looks like we have some nice... It does look like they're cherry. Let's go ahead and take one of these off. And they are cherry die sub key caps. Let's see what... thickness they come in at 1.4 millimeters very nice um i have been gravitating more towards pbt um die sub i started out i was like i don't know where i got the idea in my head but it has to be double shot like if it's not double shot it's no good and uh i don't know i don't know where that came from unfortunately it stuck around in my head for a while but I am finding that I like thicker die sub key caps. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some double shot sets that I love. I'm, I'm a big fan of the MT3. But I'm finding that I like PBT feel and sound better. Not that I don't dis not that I dislike ABS, but I think my preference is leaning towards PBT. And I'd most likely pick a die subset, a good die subset over a double shot set. Um, though I, most important to me is thickness. I'd rather 1.6 millimeter thickness because I know that I'm going to have a much deeper tone to work with with the keycaps. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Every little piece of the keyboard from the case to the plate to what's inside, you know, foam, no foam, to the switches, to the keycaps, they all combine. Um, to deliver that end sound that you hear and um some some will be affected more by the switch some will be affected less but keycaps are definitely a part of that the sound so you always have to try to consider i mean i see too many people ask well what switch so i can make this keyboard docky it's like well the switch might help make it a little bit deeper but you might want to do this x y and z you know because it's an aluminum or it's a plastic or it doesn't have foam or it has too much foam or you have to change out the foam um there's always a lot of different factors so i I can't just say, oh, buy this switch and any keyboard that you have will instantly be X. No, because it just doesn't work that way. Now, I do, I got to say, I <laughs> I have a handful of 65% percents 
with the knob. I have a GMK67 in every color. Well, no, I think I gave away one or two colors for Christmas. I, I don't know. I, I'll have to check my inventory. Not that, you know, I have to have a knob, but if I don't have a knob, I always have a macro pad with a knob because being able to just mute, I, <laughs> earlier I was, um, I was blaring some, uh, Dio. I, I hadn't heard Dio in a long time. I forget there was something that came up and oh yeah there was a ai generated image of the pope diving into what looked like a crowd you know and it said holy diver so i was like oh i haven't heard that album in ages yes i'm that old and so i i was just blaring and my phone rang so being able to just press like that and hello <laughs> it was just you know a cacophony of sound but that one button press Allows the silence to come so I can take the call and act like a, like I wasn't just blaring Dio in the background. So I am a big proponent of knobs. I love screens as well, but they're more just aesthetics. Um, I do wish that there was more functionality in Via. I know there is some in QMK, but not everybody is a C programmer. Um, I wish that Via included screen options and allowed you to share specs of your keyboard or, or let's say temperature cpu usage ram usage stuff like that stuff that we would uh you know display system statistics um any other information you know write a basic script that it would query every you know 20 seconds or however long you want it to make um you know like like a conkey well I guess no one that, if you don't use Linux, you probably don't know what Conkey is, but Conkey is basically just a uh, program that allows you to customize your um, desktop, allows you to overlay information from weather to system to RAM usage to basically anything that the computer will allow you to access. You can, you know, post up and update on a time interval that you'd like. So I would love to see via take the next step and say hey look at all these keyboards that have screens now let's do something to be able to connect data that's easily available because we're connected to the computer over usb and usb is a very thorough ser serial protocol that will allow communication back and forth and most of the mcus can handle you know taking some data and updating the screen but going off talking about a screen on a keyboard that doesn't have one anyway i apologize now another thing that i do like about this keyboard and i, I do have to say I, I i do like the layouts where you have the full right shift these are moved off a little bit and then you have a cluster but that to me is almost closer to a frl tkl not that i don't like those as well tkl is probably my favorite but I still don't have an FRL TKL, so I probably should wait to actually speak to that until I actually have one. But this one has something that I quite like, side lights. Why do I like side lights? Again, it comes to custom customization, being able to make that keyboard yours. Because I like that, but, oh, that's just a different shade of purple. What if I want to make my escape key? I think that should have been a blue one. Uh, but let's just say I want to make my escape key orange and my space bar. I want it to match the rest of the alphas. See? I quickly just transformed this and made this more of my own using colors I like and, and a layout that I like. Um, actually, to be quite honest, now that I'm looking at it, I think I'll like this better. And now we have a black on white. Nice cherry key camp set. It's keyboards like this that get the hashtag stock stock because, I mean, 
I haven't done anything to it yet. That's that's thocky, uh, in my opinion anyway. I know opinions vary, but we can see that what's helping that here is we've got we've got the IXPE layer, and I do believe that we also have a PET layer above. It feels like silicone rubber below, maybe an EVA foam in between the plate and the PCB. And these switches, I mean, I guess they're the milk switch. They're quite light. I would guess that they're around 35 to 40 grams. Well, why do I need to guess? Why don't I just look it up? All right, so this is a Yunzi milk switch. It is a linear switch, 35 grams. That's what I thought operating force of 45 plus or minus 10. So that's why I thought it's basically like a red. It has a PC top cover. And it doesn't say what the bottom housing is made out of. If I had to guess, I would say they are manufactured by Otemu, but that's just a guess. Um, primarily for the way the bottom looks as well as the wing latch style. But whatever it is, it does this keyboard right. This keyboard is south facing, so that means these keycaps or the switches don't have any interference interference with Cherry Profile keycaps. And anyway, we have a very nice solid kit, and I, I've got to say, I love the fact that they, even though it is an aluminum keyboard, not only did they make a magnetized pocket for the USB 2.4 receiver, They've also added switches into the back. And that USB port is not at all um, hiding or dipped in there. So you, practically any cable should work as long as it's wider than that at the connector. Um, so let me grab the cable that I usually use. This is a Akko Armansky cable. Plug it in and let's see. That's lovely. Yeah. It's got some nice colors. Let me see the, this. We have a caps lock light. And the other one I'm going to assume is charging. I could probably just look at the manual. But I'm guessing for right now. Um, the sound works just fine. All right. And let me see. As of lately, I've been doing this. Uh, yeah, I really like how this sounds. So we got delete. Underneath the delete is insert. Yes, that's the way I like it. Um, page up, underneath page up is, uh, it's page up either way. I usually like this to be home and end, but I have to take a look at the software. I'm sure that I can get that done. Um, but I like that delete and then insert because that's the way that I map it. Um, probably going to have, oh, that doesn't have. I'm going to have to look at the other keys for what mappings they have. And I'll also have to take a look at the software. Last time, though, I took a look at the Yunzi software. I was actually surprised at how well it was made. Now, see? I mean, isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. So we do have a Mac mode on here. I prefer a Mac switch over key combination. I... I answer at least a couple times a week a question where why isn't my windows key working or why isn't my alt key working or it's working as a windows key it's like you're in mac mode switch over to windows so you can go directly with single colors well, it looks like it does well no this one is just the side light is kind of just going through a medley of colors you can do function backspace to turn the lights on and off Bluetooth channels 1 through 3 is Q, W, and E, and R is the 2.4. If you're on wireless, this will give you the battery percentage. I do not see. So, regularly, these are your number keys. If you double tap function, these are going to turn into F1 through F12. So, it's a nice feature to have. I wish more keyboards had it. Some people, you know, sometimes you just need to, I'm going to be going through a, screen, I'm going to be hitting the F keys, what have you. Um, but having that ability, it's because a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how people can use a keyboard without 
the function keys. Like, use these. What do you mean? Those are not the function keys. Like, function that is function one. And I'm still surprised at how many people don't realize it, but I mean, there was a time I didn't know. So now they do list it here as being compatible with Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 11, Mac OS, and mobile phone. Not liking the fact that they didn't put Linux on there, but I'm on a Linux machine, so I can say it also works with Linux. I've only actually encountered one keyboard that doesn't work with Linux, and I'm still trying to figure out how I can make it work with Linux because it works just fine with Windows and Mac. No problem. And it works on my Linux box in the BIOS or before boot, but as soon as boot, it doesn't show up. The USB doesn't detect it, so I'll have to figure that out. But that's for another video. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about the side lights. I will have to reach out to them about that because I do have another keyboard similarly that does not seem to have or at least it doesn't list. I know that there's a way to change those side lights. I just don't know what key combination it is. Because this is change backlight effect and this and it's not changing the side. Function win locks the windows key so you can't accidentally activate it. Yeah, I don't see function tab white light on or on. You can go straight to just a white light. Well, that actually matches there. Well, I guess what you'd call white is a little bit purplish, but hmm. I guess just the net, the the standard for it is just to cycle through colors. There's got to be a way to set a color for that, and I'm going to reach out to them and see what they say, and I'll update that when I when I get that information. Anyway, we're looking at a very solid keyboard. Um, I'll go ahead and plug it so I don't, I don't know how many times I've been recording and I have the keyboard plug in and I hit enter or space and it just pauses or stops recording. I'm just still just talking away to no one, to nothing. So I have to be more careful about that because I've, I've not recorded many hours of me speaking. <laughs> So we have these, um, I've been seeing these lately. I think they're made out of palm. They're very nice. Um, they're quite nice clip-in stabilizers. And they have the minimal, most minimal of a uh, wiggle. But let's see what we have here. I'm always curious though. I'm pretty sure I know what to expect here. Yep. There is no holes on the PCB for screw and stabilizer. So thankfully they gave us some nice stabilizers. They are decently lubed, not overly lubed. They're not dripping in lube, so they fit nicely. Always make sure to lock. Remember, it's south facing. No tick. So taking a look at this finish, we have a very nice looking finish. We do have a QC pass sticker over one of the um, screw holes. Now, somebody did ask in the sub that when I went to go review this, if I could see what size it takes to open it up. Ah, that one will open it, but it's a little loose. So I want one a bit bigger than this. So with good care, you can remove these. This is a... Uh, of course, these don't have the sizes on them. It does. This is a Torx 6H. So um, even though this is actually not a Torx, it's a, um, I forgot what these are called, but the Torx 6 seems to fit just fine in there. Now, you're going to want to be careful 
to use the right size and then when on that first turn just do it nice and slow so you don't strip out the hole and then you can pull the screw all the way up but it does have a very um, soft screw head so I would not over tighten this but yes I was able to do it with a torque 6 whatever the the comparable size is in the one that's not a Torx will work for this as well so today I'm not going to be opening it because we're just doing the unboxing but I will come back to it and it's it's funny because you know for the first year or so that I was doing this basically you know I'd say all right I'm going to come back to this board to mod it and see how much better I can make it sound but boards are now coming so well tuned out of the box it's like well I'll, I'll come back to it to get a different sound not to make it I mean not necessarily make it sound better because I mean now I would like to hear what this would sound like with maybe some U4 TX's in there and I think that would give it even a deeper thock the um, the new GMK67 and I made a video about this you will see that right here in the center post where this middle part of the switch goes um, there's plastic there just use a plastic spudger or a pen I would avoid using anything metal and just punch out that hole then your switch will easily just go ahead and glide on in there and the pins whether it be three or five are going to make the rest of the holes now when I do come back to it I will pick a different set of switches and maybe even different keycaps um, to see something that either complements the blue or contrasts with the blue. I'm learning my color wheel. <laughs> my wife is teaching me a little bit about design so that I can put together keyboards that look prettier. Because <laughs> I do, I, I like pretty, I like colors. I like things that catch my eye and make me go, ooh, but I also want it to sound good. I type on it and feel good. I mean, this is obviously gasket mount and it's my perfect gasket mount. It's not a trampoline. It's just enough to give you a nice soft typing touch and it's going to be more uniform going up and down the rows. Anodic, ano, anodic oxidation? All right, I can say I don't know what that one is. So, because it does have kind of a, I like it, it's a bit of a, a rough texture. It's like if I had gecko fingers, I could just pick it up like that because it has um, I don't know, it has texture, and, and I like it. It's not, it's not soft. It's not hard. It's just, I don't know, nice to touch. It, it's almost like a, say like a very light um, sandpaper. It has a gritty, but not in a gritty like oh it feels dirty. In a gritty like it feels like hey this thing is not going to slip out of my hand. If I need to defend myself with it. Let's go ahead and first try Bluetooth. So we're going to go ahead and put it into Bluetooth mode. And if I recall it correctly, or if I look at the card real quick, because I forgot, we have Q as the first channel. So I'm going to select function Q and then function Q hold down. All right, so the blinking happens here, it doesn't happen at the LED. And there I see it, the AL, AL66 in both 5 and 3. So obviously if you have 5 or higher, I would go with the 5.0 uh, connection. And there we are. Now I have, I'm using a, ah, if you double tap function, I guess it just locks function down because it was giving me the tilt when I was hitting the escape. Um, I have a Bluetooth dongle on my Linux machine and it's a real tech dongle. So for some reason, the first connection just takes a few seconds, but then after that, I'm good to go. So it's an issue with my dongle, not with the keyboard. <laughs> All right, so now let's switch on over to 2.4. Let me go ahead and pop this out. It's in there nicely. I'd rather it be nice in there so I don't lose it. But I did do wish that they would have put 
I mean, a sticker even on there that says Yunzi. That way I can at least, you know, recognize what it might be coming from. All right, so plug it in. It's instant. Instantly. I mean, I didn't even... You don't hear a ding. I've got legs, so... <laughs> but, um... The uh, connection was instant. It's working nice. Yep. Nice and fast. So the wireless connections work fine, even on Linux. And I can say that and mean it because it does work with Linux. It's very rare. Um, there are a couple of keyboards, such as older Keychron keyboards, that you, it requires a little hack. Um, not a hack, but just basically a command or changing a configuration file in order for it to recognize it as a non-Mac keyboard. Like it just wants to throw it into Mac mode. Um, and I did make a video about that and a post as well. But if you guys need to need to know where it's at, let me know. All right, so I, it's been a while since I've used the black on white keycap set, even though I, I do have a few of them. Um, I've been uh, uh, the last one I did it on actually was a XDA uh, black on white on a GMK67 in red, and. That's one of the ones I gave away for Christmas. A friend came over, he saw it, and he was like, what is this? I have to have this. And I mean, it's just a red body, black knob, XDA, um, black on white keycaps with harangas, I believe, with uh, Japanese sub-legends. And he was, he just couldn't take his eyes off of it. So I was like, here. <laughs> like, he, he he was like walking out the door. I'm like, well, wait, you got you need the box, comes with the cable and everything else. He's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> but he was like, he just fell in love with it. So I hope I hope you're enjoying it. Um, but the black on the white is just such a nice, clean feel. Now, these, I can see mixing these up to come up with. I really wish that blue, that enter. I mean, I see it's blue, but it's not the same. Wish they had stuck with the whites and then these would be blues because then I could see doing blue blue with the yellow space bar I think that would look nice anyway that's that's neither here nor there they do have a nice dark blue space bar but again gives you the option to um, configure your keyboard you know do some uh, that was instant I just switched over to Bluetooth instant so now i gotta be careful because if i hit this or I hit this i go away <laughs> um but I, I i have to say this is again this is a solid keyboard i don't want to say that this is a gmk 67 in aluminum because it's not the same keyboard um but the form factor is very similar. You got the lights here. You don't have the side lights on the GMK67, but you got them on here. But this is this is just a solid hunk of aluminum. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Yunzi AL66. This is a 66 key, three mode aluminum, 65% keyboard with a knob. It is available in silver, blue, black, and pink. It includes a gasket mounted flex PC plate as well as plate mounted stabilizers, an IPXE layer, a PET layer, and other foams between the plate and the PCB as well as below the PCB in the case. It is a 3 and 5 pin hot swap south facing PCB that includes NKRO, Bluetooth 3 and 5, as well as 2.4 and USB connectivity. This keyboard comes with a 4600 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 1185 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters, while the back sits at 31 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 7 degrees. This keyboard is available from Yunzi.com. Bare bone for $85 or $99 with switches and keycaps. 
When purchasing this keyboard, fully loaded, it will include Yunzi Milk linear switches as well as some extra switches and extra keycaps for your customization. Alright, so today we took a look at the Yunzi AL66, a lovely CNC aluminum 65%. Um, I like the blue. I'd be interested to take a look at the pink. I don't have that many pink keyboards and I'm, I'm starting to grow a little fondness for them. But blue is my favorite color, so I don't have any complaints. Though I am going to look for a different knob. Um, not that silver doesn't work good with blue, but I'd like different colors. I will be coming back to this. Um, I'm going to take a look at the software. I'm going to see if I can find out what the settings change the side lights are. And I'm also going to open it up and see what we've got on the inside and see if a uh, you know, tape mod or anything else helps improve this already stock dock keyboard. Um, I appreciate the fact that they include extra switches. I've got to say, I don't know where in my head I got... In my head, I thought that this was an over $100 keyboard. But then I looked, and it's $85 bare bone and $99 loaded with switches and keycaps, a couple extra switches and a couple of extra keycaps. I mean, that's that's not bad. We're getting into that sub 100 territory. This would not have been available a year ago. You would not have gotten this, maybe with a discount, but at regular sale price, there was no way. I mean, I don't think it even would have been $99 bare bone. I would say $129 bare bone and $169 with keycaps and switches that would have been my guess but this is a solid keyboard it it sounds lovely i mean like i said it's these keyboards are starting to be stock stock they're going to put me out of the modding business i love modding keyboards and i still have plenty to mod so don't worry about that that was just a joke um but i like the keycaps they're 1.4 millimeter thick uh, the legends are actually nice and clear. They're big, like I like them. I wish they took up more of the key, but I know most people like them up in the corner. Um, I'm old school, and I prefer the big, chunky legends. But that's just nitpicky. I I will be taking this to my desk, and it will be my daily driver for at least the next few days because, well, because I like to test drive the keyboards and come back, report when I come back, you know, and follow up on it. But also because I love how this looks and I love how it sounds. I mean, yeah, that's just that's that's nice. That's nice. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with the the stock sound test of this keyboard. If there's anything else that you guys would like to take you know, like for me to take a look at uh, when I come back to this keyboard, I will try to find. I have a more complete set of drivers. I'm getting the impression that a lot of these keyboards, uh, because they're coming so well stocked, they're kind of expecting. And I mean, most keyboard manufacturers do state if you open this up, you know, if it's not a kit, if it doesn't come already disassembled that you have to put together, it's usually, you know, read the fine print because opening up may void your warranty. Um, I still have. I want to say it's a Young Z as well, but it's a plastic keyboard um, that has a switch on the side, has like these grips on the side of the keyboard. Uh, the couple of videos that I've seen on it, when people have tried to open it, they've broken it. I think I know how to open it. I will be coming back to that at some point. But again, I will also be disclaiming that, you know, the company is not going to be at fault if you open it up and you break something because a lot of these keyboards, if they're not in a kit, they're usually not going to want you to start opening up. Now, there's some exceptions, like Monskeek. I mean, they include stuff to use on the inside of the keyboard, so obviously they expect you to open it up, and they're going to build it in a way that is going to be a lot less susceptible to, like, strip screws or things breaking if you open it the wrong way and so on and so forth. So, like the LK67. Uh, I, I was the second person to make a video on how to open it without breaking the switch because... People were doing the steps backwards and trying to take the plate off and it would just break the switch. And that was it. <laughs> I mean, you could obviously use a needle to put it into place, but kind of defeats the purpose of having a nice switch. So it's like one of those keyboards. I mean, those, they weren't really meant to be open. 
So, um, but we'll figure out about this one and see how um, how it looks on the inside. I'm curious to see, but I am going to enjoy using this keyboard. Again, I primarily stay wired. Um, when I go wireless, I usually try to take the smallest keyboard with me possible, um, which begs the question, I haven't seen too many 40% that are wireless. I can't think of a single 40% that's wireless. Got plenty of 60% that are wireless, but hmm. Does anybody out there know of a 40% that's wireless? Because, I mean, just for basic, you know, answering emails, you know, browsing the web, 40% is more than enough. And, I mean, and if you're used to the layers, you can do anything you want to. So, but anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test. I do hope that you guys enjoy. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know in the comment section down below. I do my best to respond to all comments. Let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.